All right, guys. So Trevor Forrest. Hi, Trevor. Good morning. He is <laughs> the CEO of 876 Technology Solutions. Uh, we have Donald Port. Donald just just about everything. <laughs> Beach for crypto. He's a dev for hive. He does things on peak. We need to talk about peak now because I thought that was I think that's very interesting. And once Vernon gets his um, camera thing set up, we're gonna go over uh, to Vernon. So, so guys, welcome Sounds to good the stuff. Make a Life Show. Trevor, you're muted. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for being can here, you, guys. Can you hear me good? Or? We're yeah. hearing you perfectly. This is great. All right. So we're going to do a quick recap of the Twitter spaces, the disastrous Twitter spaces that happened last week, Thursday. And Trevor, if you could quickly, because you said so many things that was like, oh, to me. But can you quickly <laughs> explain what blockchain is? And how it works in the most layman eight year old way. You're talking to eight year olds. Yes. How would you explain blockchain to a class of eight year olds? Wow. Um, I don't know about the eight year old thing. Um, <laughs> no, but really, blockchain technology or blockchain is really a <clears throat> uh, very special ledger of transactions. So, you know, much in much the same way you have a, a ledger uh, this big book that you write all transactions in or or you store your transaction in an excel spreadsheet or in a database blockchain is is very much like that um, except uh, it has some very special features and capabilities and all it's meant to do is to keep track of transactions that occur in the digital space um, and it does so in a very uh, secure way. It does so in a distributed fashion because what it does is it relies on a network of peer-to-peer -peer connected computers that all have a copy of that ledger um, to make sure that the, the transactions are stored safely, stored securely, stored in a robust and, and distributed way. Um, and that's really um, the key aspect of, of what uh, the blockchain is. Oftentimes, they, they use the term distributed ledger technology. Um, and blockchain falls within that category of, of distributed ledger technology. And they use the term distributed because that ledger is stored across multiple hundreds, sometimes thousands of machines, so that um, you know there is a whole level of, of redundancy and robustness to it. Um, obviously, because when you're you know talking about doing uh, transactions, it's very helpful to have um, your your transactions stored in in more than one place. Um, and finally. Uh, it's very secure. Um, and I think that is the linchpin aspect of blockchain, which makes it so special, is how it stores those transactions in that, in that ledger. And um, I think, uh, you know, without getting too technical, um, I think that that is one of the key aspects of what makes blockchain uh, so important and so, so special. It's how it goes about securely uh, recording all the transactions that 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 are done uh, by the systems that sit on top of it is that is that is that eight year old enough i i th I, I think i got it <laughs> <laughs> I, I i i think i and I, I i understand it but um you know i was I, i'm always reading up about this and i was you know looking and i hear them talk about blockchain miners and nuns and how they actually track uh, these these systems. So apparently, it's like every time something is generated, and I say something because I'm not sure, because we may be talking about Bitcoin or something else, a number is assigned. Is that how it is? Right. And then that's what is called a nonce, because right. that number can only be assigned once. 
<laughs> Alright, so getting into the slightly yeah, more. I'm getting into technical. technical. Yeah, we 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 we've passed eight year olds. <laughs> yeah. Let's not pass go. As Bonnie said, let's not pass go. Let's not pass go. But I mean, explaining I mean, what I, I in, um, can I? Think I, um, that, I think that um, you know, all, all you need to really understand is that every time a transaction occurs, yeah, mm -hmm. everybody on the network or all the computers on the network. Mm -hmm. agree that the transaction is valid yeah. once they agree that the transaction is valid a block is created yes. to represent that transaction yes and the the important thing about that block is that it is inextricably tied to the block before it and any following transaction is tied to the block in front of it now this is this is this is oh that's hence blockchain. blockchain exactly ah. right um, the name the name comes from its structure in which right. you know individual right. records called blocks are linked together in a single list or a chain that's the exactly. simplest one sentence that explanation is, yes yeah that linkage is extremely in secure because it is created using um uh, very sophisticated uh, cryptographic algorithms that generate these very long numbers yes. that tie one block to another. So another block, and that's where the miners come in. Well, yes. the miners. It's, it's their job to keep that. Well, the miners, what they do is they are part of that network of, 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 of computers. Right. What they're doing is they're actually. Uh, participating in a very unique way. They're trying to solve a particular mathematical problem right. that allows the transactions to be validated. And their incentive is once they solve that problem, they get, they get, get, they get currency. A piece. So, currency. Yes. Okay. They get so, a piece. So, Donald, you, 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 you were saying about the, the chain and the thing. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's 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 it's... What you, I think, what you were referring to was a hash, right? So each transaction would have a hash, mm -hmm. which is considered a, just considered a transaction ID, like um, yeah. PayPal, a receipt, or anything else. They all have a transaction ID. So yeah. as Trevor was stating, the very next transaction uses that hash or transaction ID from the last one within the next. So it's almost impossible for another entity once they're all confirmed by thousands, millions of devices for another entity to add a new record into that chain and match these hashes due to the uh, complex algorithms and, and computations that the devices have to do while mining to solve the equation as Trevor stated, right? So okay. in the background, miners keep track of everything, but also that's where the hash hashes are generated and linked and continuously so forth, right? So um, Bitcoin in particular uses uh, SHA-256 hash function. Um, there's many different hash functions and encryptions, and that's where the cryptography comes in, right? So crypto and cryptography itself is a somewhat of a separate entity from blockchain, but once you combine cryptography, uh, chain structure, data, record of data, and a decentralized application, that's where you get Bitcoin or blockchain or any other cryptocurrency, if that makes sense. That that, that makes sense. And, but Varun, I think you're muted. Can you unmute? Yeah. So Varun, you actually use blockchain in it, it, it as, a part, as part of Farm Credibly. Yeah. You yeah. use this blockchain technology. And I think if, if I'm understanding it correctly, you use this blockchain technology to help farmers uh, become credit worthy in a way? Yeah, um, exactly. And so in conversations with farmers and stakeholders in the um, agricultural sector, to be honest, no one cares about blockchain. No one cares about the, the technology mm -hmm. in the sense that of, of how it works. So I prefer to talk more about why, you know, it's not about how and the nonce and the miners so much. It's about, I mean, I can ex I can explain that, but if I do, I try to do it in very clear terms. So yeah. I like to think of this, uh, as people have said, it's a ledger. So it's um, 
it's really more like how we're familiar with group text messages. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more useful to think of this change in how we're storing information as being similar to the change in how we're communicating with group text messages, right? Yeah. So um, I often say, well, like we said, to be blockchain, it needs to be three things, an immutable distributed ledger, right? Three kind of complex words. But when we say immutable, it just means it's very tamper proof. It's hard to crack. It's hard to falsify information. So when we are talking about cryptography, all of that, that's where that comes in. Um, so immutable, if anyone's ever been in a group text message and sent the wrong thing or said something they didn't want to say, um, and then you want to delete it or make sure no one else sees it, it's actually very hard because it would have already appeared on other people's phones, etc. So that's why you can think of immutability in this way um, around group text messages. It's also distributed or group text messages are distributed, right? Because if I... I'm in a group chat with you guys and I throw my phone away or it falls in the swimming pool um, and no longer works, the chat still exists, right? And I may have to buy a new phone um, and try to get back the same number or even a new SIM and get back access to it. But the chat still lives independent of me and my specific device. Um, and then, of course, it's a ledger because you have a running uh, record of... Uh, chat history oh, right? they're all time stamped okay. and it's all it's all right there so it's a distributed immutable ledger and that's it that's all you have to appreciate to understand um blockchain right okay. and what's more significant to me is the why and the why is what's propelling this conversation right now and why so many people are interested in uh this conversation because it's about what the technology can do and how this can really transform the way we do even very simple things like uh, exchanging money and yeah. so yeah and so that's why this is so powerful you know it's it's really yeah. about the why and i think okay. too the work that you're doing varun uh, because many in many cases we don't readily marry uh agriculture something that's so historical and you know a part of legacy and you eat yeah hunter gatherer <laughs> yeah uh with um <clears throat> with cutting edge technology and innovation and i think it's so important for us to uh to overlap and to marry uh those spaces especially those that we don't tread traditionally uh, instantly recognize as a part of uh, this conversation and show how it actually works in a real life situation beyond earning a book and going into establishing a history and a track record uh, to allow me to get credit, to allow me to grow and build my business yeah. as a business, not a hustle, Mm -hmm. Not to sell 10 pounds or something today and then zero tomorrow, but a business. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. And it, mm -hmm. it's not only significant from the point of view of a business or a farmer who wants to operate as a business, but even, like you said, all of us eat, right? Even mm -hmm. if I go to Coronation Market and I pick up a mango, wouldn't it be that much better if I could know exactly where that mango came from, you know, mm -hmm. or... So we're all. And if I read, you go read it for one tree. You know, you buy it. Yeah, it, you buy it, there is a, it comes from yeah. a specific place in St. Thomas that grows yes. it under these conditions. Like conditions. Mm -hmm, no mm -hmm. chemical pesticides, you know. Yeah. Organic is really pesticides. organic. That's, that's <laughs> it. And it's, it's verifiable and trustworthy. That's yeah. the big value that's being brought to the table here. Mm. And what, we, what we're looking at. And that's what blockchain oh. brings to. Um, Brings to the um, pretty much, and that's mm -hmm. uh, from a product line point of view, but also um, I like to look at it as it's a disruption, but it's not the end, right? So, for example, you mentioned email. Um, blockchain does to databases and traditional record technology, which includes banks, of course, what email did to the post office, if that, you know, um, yeah. it's not going to change everything, but it makes it most of the smaller things a lot easier to do, right? Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah it, it, that's like the best analogy I can use. It's, it's 
Yeah. It's, it's a, a really good also, analogy. Yeah. I was on the internet because prior to blockchain, there was no way to prove ownership of of anything. Right, so yeah. that's also where NFTs come in, non fungible token. Yeah. And, and I um, want to move to I want to move to that aspect. Of the, I want to just stick up in right there and talk to talk about ownership because that's really important when we start talking about, as you said, NFTs. But also when we start talking about cryptocurrency, because yes. uh, the, the 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 ability to track this thing to make sure that it's legit, right, is where the blockchain comes in. So can we then download yeah. the over to cryptocurrency and again layman explanation as to what cryptocurrency is and what role blockchain played in the emergence of cryptocurrency well cryptocurrencies generally are just a way to keep track of data right um for example with bitcoin it's, it's you're keeping track of financial data how many bitcoins does one person have and yeah. it really only keeps track of who sent what to whom, when, and who confirmed the transaction. That's it, right? So that's why Bitcoin just keeps it as simple as possible. But there are other blockchains, uh, for example, like Ethereum, which was the first attempt at a distributed uh, operating system, so to speak, where you could do simple computer computations called smart contracts, um, run simple programs, even games on Ethereum, right? But it's still based on the same blockchain technology. And the Ethereum cryptocurrency is what keeps track of who has what um, governance uh, uh, and many other aspects of the actual chain itself. So a cryptocurrency intrinsically has zero value except for what value people give to it. Um, and I always like to say uh, especially to avoid risk, is to only involve yourself or use cryptocurrencies that you actually have a use for, right? So um, unless you're trying to make gains from trading, you shouldn't be investing or purchasing cryptocurrencies that have no daily or at least weekly or monthly use for yourself. For example, Varun's project is, is for farmers, right? So they will have a use for it. They'll Outside investors will also, you know, maybe speculate on that use. So that's where the value of the cryptocurrency comes from. Without right. an actual use and speculation, then there's no actual value. So the term currency is kind of added to it. it, it it's, it's, it's a gray area nowadays. It wasn't before because prior most blockchains had some financial aspect to it. When now today, there are blockchains like um, Decentraland, which is like, I don't know if you have kids that play Roblox or Minecraft. It's it's a game built on the blockchain, right? So today the tech is is still used for keeping track of data transactions, but the data transactions have gone far beyond just financial, right? Just business monetary data. So in cryptocurrency is the currency that's used on a particular blockchain to keep track and govern and, and um, Pretty much that's like the simplest way I can put it on so that it's not particular used, chain. So it's not used like money. It's not money. It's not a form <laughs> of money. It's not virtual money. Well, because when you when you think cryptocurrency, you automatically it's a virtual store money. of value, right? Which okay. does not necessarily mean money. So money. yes, you're yes. Um Bitcoin does predominantly transact financial data. But that data right. isn't necessarily money, right? Um, the other layers of Bitcoin, uh, for example, if you're transacting in Satoshi's, you could use that minute value to send uh, cryptographic messages to someone else and spend right. little to no money, right? That is right. So even though it's predominantly used to keep track of currencies, value, etc., that is not its actual main use it's the data and the underlying data on bitcoin for for this example is currency and value but it's not money there's a definite difference between money currency and value right currency is what we transact um value is what we give to something money is the hardest one to explain out of all of them so that's why bitcoin 
So if, if, if please, I, if please I, help I, me, Joe. <laughs> Maybe you can help me. Yeah. Um, so, so this thing, right? Yeah. Everybody's familiar with this. Yes. This is a hundred dollar bill. It's printed on a piece of paper. The only reason this has value yeah. is because some authority, either a government or a central bank, says it does. Other than that, it's a piece of paper. It's a piece of paper. Okay. Now, we, we for decades and centuries, have lived in a realm where this thing is used to exchange goods and services goods and services and yes. store value ah. so yes now the thing about it is we've, we've gotten to a point where this thing this piece of paper just like documents in a in a in a hospital or in a in, in a in a insurance company or in a bank paper has gotten obsolete so how do you now take this and transact in the same way, but do so in, in an entirely digital realm, right? right? How do you ascribe value to something you can't see Physically. or touch? And is not boned by the paper because... Right. Because you know, this, is what, this is what people trust. This is what gives people the warm and fuzzy. Something yeah. I can touch, feel, give to somebody. Yeah. When I go to the bank, that's why I have lines outside the bank. When I go to the bank, I can take my Kyle and give to somebody. And I say, yes, I gave you my money. If something happened to it, I'm coming back and asking you what you do with my money. Yeah. How do we now go from this to transactions in an entirely digital realm where this does not exist? Yeah. Um, it's something that will allow you to maintain the same level of trust, maintain the, the, the same Fine. level of warm and fuzzy, yeah. uh, maintain the same level of security, yeah. right? That thing is called digital currency, right. right? Now, digital currencies exist in many forms. Blockchain yes. underpins the majority of digital currencies, but cryptocurrency is just one form of digital, digital currency. currency. Mm -hmm. right. So you have exactly. central bank digital currencies which are emerging. Yeah. Those are the currencies that are backed and, and endorsed by, by, by governments government. and central banks. Right. You have virtual currencies that, that are created and and issued by private entities. Uh, entities. Right. Like Apple will Pay and Google Pay, etc. Okay. Private, yeah, private exactly. entities. Okay. Then you have cryptocurrencies, which is another form of digital currency. And by the way, virtual currencies are not regulated. They're not controlled by any bank or any government. Right. Um, and that in itself, along with things like cryptocurrencies, what always creates the, the, the angst, but also it fuels arguments of fear and uncertainty and doubt um, for, for detractors of, of, of cryptocurrency because... We have been trained to 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 function a particular way. If yes. it don't look like this, it can't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's there's it, another thing, Trevor. If, and I want you to continue, but this came to me while you were talking, right? A part of the confusion is a physical dollar bill takes away some of the confusing maths that happens in the background because we have things like inflation. Ten years ago, your hundred dollar could have buy five patty because it was twenty dollars for for a patty. In twenty twenty one, you need two of those hundred dollars to buy the patty. To buy one patty. One patty. However, convert that and twist it up, the, the mental acrobatics that's required to try and figure out, mm -hmm. okay, how did this single thing that could have bought five of that at this point in time can only buy mm -hmm. half of that today? But and so, I don't have the I don't have the the, the luxury or the security of the hard hundred dollar in my pocket right. and, and by saying well, that here's the thing, can i just add one yeah, thing right. to what monique just said 
um, when you purchase the five patties, they give you yeah. a a receipt, right? And you take that receipt. I mean, juicy um, mothers, they can take that receipt. Tasty. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tasty. You take that receipt and you go wait on the on the side, and then the server collects everything for you and gives it to you, provided you have that receipt. That receipt could be yeah. considered a to a token, right? So most cryptocurrencies are tokens because you paid five dollars or for, you paid for five patties. You received yeah. this this token that you could either collect your patties now or put save them for a later day, come back to Tasty tomorrow and maybe collect them, or oh, send yeah. staff the next week. And, <laughs> and theoretically, right? Oh, theoretically, you, you, can can receive, you, can, you could you give never, it to you somebody could, else. You could hand it to patties. somebody else. Exactly. And they else could collect the five from you. Someone else could purchase from you and they could collect the five packs. So Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies in most senses act like this token the receipt in the middle of that. So it's not the money that you paid for the patties. It's not the patties themselves. It's the token that allows you to redeem them later. And that, that, that is the, that is the key and thing. And that that's token can be traded. Yes. Right. And that, that that's, yeah, that's exactly. Because with, with, it is an exchange. And I often say this as, as my, you know, pitch line for blockchain technology, it will do for info for, for, for value exchange what the internet did for information exchange. Fundamentally it lowers that up. Because again, what what Monique spoke to and what Donald has talked to is again a, a fundamental shift in the way we look at doing things. Yeah. All we're talking mm -hmm. about happens in a real realm. Paper. How do you mm -hmm. do that now when you have no paper? Mm -hmm. And suppose yeah, central there, authority suppose there are no, the no banks. Yeah, suppose exactly. there are no banks. Exactly. How do you how do you facilitate transactions in that kind of way that you still maintain the trust, you still maintain the transparency, um, you you still ensure that transactions can occur between two individuals who don't know each other, don't yeah. trust each other, but don't need to because what happens in between ensures that either party will get what they need. Yeah. This is what blockchain technology blockchain. does. And on top of that, you have cryptocurrencies, which function as a, uh, a new way of transacting business in an extremely frictionless way without the need for a whole bunch of middle people. Middle men. OK, because so, as money will say that at every turn, that middleman gets a cut. Exactly. And that contributes <laughs> yeah, to the cost of the good. So, ah, okay. so, so when you look at all of the applications of a technology like blockchain, all of the applications of cryptocurrency, when you look at you know the work Baron has been doing with with Farm Credibly, one of the things that always comes out of that is hyper efficiency and low cost, yeah. because what yeah. you're doing now is you're establishing an entirely new way of doing things in an extremely efficient, trustworthy. And, and low cost way. Wait, so okay. And when, you look, when you look at what the central banks are attempting to do with central bank digital currency, mm -hmm. what they're doing is trying to alleviate the load of managing this because yes. they have to drive around with them thing and bring truck and all them stuff. They put them yeah. in a vault and say, when you go digital, this goes away. So yeah. all the fees you pay, all the, 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 the time it takes. The cost and, the risk, and the risk. And the risk. Associate and the risk, the, the man, them, the man, them who driving in that truck, they see them big gun. <laughs> right. So, so that's a good point, money and, and and risk as well. And and is it two guys and and Vernon can jump in here and let me know too. Is a part of this because I know Vernon a part of what you're doing with the use of blockchain technology is try to bring. And you can tell me if I'm right or wrong. Farmers into a formal sector, a more formal business sector, because now that they have asset and they can trace assets and stuff like that, they cannot get a loan. And once you can get a loan from a bank, your farmer, your 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 the, the the act of getting a loan from a bank formalizes you and your business. So is that one of the reasons why you chose? to go that route is, is that is that one of the i think i think i guess i can say the pluses for using blockchain technology is that it now brings people into a more formal sector oh no got oh no ouch 
Oh Lord. So Trevor, I guess you can help me. Is is that one of one of the, the, the things with um blockchain that you can now bring people into a more formalized sector and have more people participate in a formal sector if you have like a CDBC? Right. So so again, blockchain is the underlying technology. Yes. What sits on top of it, in, in this case the, the cryptocurrencies, the virtual currencies or the CBDCs, and Vermont is back. Um is what is it's it's a now a mechanism for bringing people into a new way of of transacting business. You can remember, you know, a lot of people who don't have their money in a bank and have their money under their mattress and so on. It's because they don't trust. No one trusts. Right. Um. You literally have people that go to the bank just to check if their money is there. Yeah, man. Withdraw one dollar. Yeah, it's a trust thing. So, 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 oh, so, yes. yeah, they do. Um, in fact, I, I was made aware of a, of a statistic, a report I was done that said that in Jamaica, the majority of people who store their money under them bed and not in the bank is confined to a single parish. I'm not going to call the parish name, but there is a particular <laughs> parish where that practice is predominant, right? So, so, guess which so, so one of the things that, <laughs> that it does is it says, look, I understand you might not trust the banking system, but when you don't have this, how you going to work? Here is a way for you to conduct business, yes. uh, transact. Uh, when partner needs to throw and there's no paper, how you do that digitally? Yeah. Right? So you need to have a platform and a system that still engenders the trust and, and all of that. Yeah. to facilitate that so so and and you know Baron can jump in here yes, that, please. yeah so i think i missed the question kedia because so i wanted to find out because you know I, and, and i'm glad clever uh, trevor came up because trevor was like blockchain is the underlying technology and what and there are things that sits on top of that so so i wanted to find out from you if a part of the reason why you choose to use this technology in this particular kind of way because as monique said earlier you don't usually see the marriage between uh, uh agrarian um culture with tech right because mm -hmm. one is so traditional as money said where you know you till the soil you do whatever you do you plant your food you get the food you... so i know there's a marriage between these two we see it in aquaponics and all sorts of excitement going on there but for you um in, in coming up with the idea for farm credibly was a part of it you're trying to get farmers into a more formal sector where they don't have access to whatever obtains in that sector so bank loans there's a there's a sort of legitimacy that is now add, added to them as a uh, legitimate business yeah absolutely Kida. you got it so it's all about bye, building bye. Trust. Um, the challenge around or the challenge for a lot of farmers is in building that trust for example with a bank when they walk in how do they actually show that they are credit worthy and and can be trusted with a loan yeah. right now it's typically very challenging um yeah. but at the same time there are legitimate farmers out there doing good business who do more business with access to capital and so we're we're really set on identifying these opportunities and then you know finding finance to actually uh, help grow people's business but when you talk about trust generally um yes why i'm attracted to the agricultural sector with the use of this technology is because um, agricultural markets typically operate with very low levels of trust. And so building things at, on top of blockchain um, allows for a very different way of um, doing things. For example, like we were saying earlier, right? People trust that this, this money because it was issued by the government or um, for farmers, for example, there is an interesting relationship often with the government where there can be a lack of trust at times, right? And having a group text message, to go back to the analogy, to share information in is advantageous to something that, for example, depends on the government, where you don't know if when you put information in here, if it will stay that way, if it will yeah. get uh, ignored, tampered with, etc. You have no power where that comes in. Yeah. Whereas if you use a different type of technology, suddenly you are as privy as anyone else is to this information, right? Yeah. In the group text message, you may not know every, everyone may not be in your address book. So for those 
transactions, you're just seeing numbers. But if you know the person um, as a contact, you can see their name, right? And so there are there is a level of transparency and there's a level of trust building. For farmers, yeah. when they make a sale, for example, very often it takes a long time to get paid, whether it's to a hotel or a supermarket. In fact, people are quite oblivious to how much this takes place. And what yeah. effectively is happening is farmers themselves are the biggest issuers of credit in the ecosystem. They're actually lending to the supermarket, et cetera. But yet mm -hmm. when I buy something from the supermarket, I can't walk out with my bags full and say, you I know, said, I my... <laughs> hey, right? 15 so, days, 30 exactly. days. So using this technology suddenly allows for new models of financing, where whether it's supply chain farm financing so that yeah. the farmer makes the sale but can receive instant payout so that he can put that money back, he or she can put that money back in, into their into farm. Yeah. Let me, let me give you We have two final things that we need to talk about before we end this segment. Does NFTs work the same way cryptocurrency works in terms of the tracking part? Because I know Dana was talking about, you know, this is how you track and the story and value, etc. And I know that for some, I don't know if it's for all, but I know for some NFTs, they're also run on the blockchain. So, I'm not right around. Others can chime in, but to go back to the point Donald made earlier, right? Mm -hmm. These tokens, which NFTs is, an NFT is just a type of token. Yeah. It's just a receipt. Essentially what we're talking about is a receipt for an exchange of value. Right. All that's happening, uh, what we're observing with NFTs is just that the creators in our ecosystem are using this technology a lot more for the things that they are creating, which is artwork. Right. So this is just work. another way of using that technology to uh, exchange yeah, it, something of value. Create a receipt. Yeah, to create a receipt. In a layman sense, uh, and anybody can correct me, this is like in the olden days when you used to buy shares and you get a share certificate. And whoever hold the share certificate, or you buy a house and you get the title, and whoever hold the title own the house. I just, make, make <laughs> I just have to make it make sense. I just have to make it convert it so that it makes sense to me. Yeah, man. Yeah. And that, right. and that, funnily enough, um, and, I, and I want to give you two instances that ties back to NFTs and the value it has <clears throat> for 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 creatives and artists. But let me let me start with one. Um, blockchain technology uh, has an application in identity management, right? And, and I know Kata likes um, controversial topics. So, so here's here's the thing. National identity, right? Mm -hmm. One of the things that causes Jamaican people to have the heebie-jeebies about national identity and providing the information to the government is that they don't know what's going to happen to that information after they give it to the government. Absolutely. Well, except for apart from the fact that they give it to Facebook and Google. Well, that's what I'm saying. So listen. So listen. So listen. But, but but what if there was a way that if you gave your information to government, anytime somebody did something with it, even peep on it, you, you knew, know. right? Um, and it is done in such a way that even when them peep on it, them can do something to remove the fact that them look on it, yeah. right? Okay. You yeah? Yeah. Ledger of transaction blockchain-based identity management systems facilitate the ability for people to know what is happening in that system and it allows them to garner greater trust. So that's that's the first thing. Yeah. The second, and, and this, this again ties back now to NFTs because one of the biggest problems artists have is when they create something, this is not only paintings, this is musicians, when they create something mm -hmm. and they sell it to somebody, after I buy that piece of painting or music Work from that person, art. and I buy it for a thousand dollars, if I, somebody comes into my office and says, "Boy, you know, maybe you're fifteen thousand for that painting," I get fifteen thousand dollars. The mm -hmm. artist doesn't. The artist don't get them thousand dollars. With with NFTs and doing this stuff in a digital realm, underpinned by by blockchain type technology. <laughs> Every time that asset, digital asset, changes hands, 
me the creator know about it and okay. i can get my cut and that's if the you. kind of so is that like royalties yes yes but it can be more within the code. Way, right oh. and what that does is it ensures that my creation when it goes out there into outer space as it moves along its own journey yeah i get what i am due okay. right because that receipt is moving with it as well and that's one of the important aspects of things like nfts underpinned by blockchain because you can see you can what is your asset and ensure that you get the, the the benefits that you are to derive so musicians artists all sorts of creatives that's the the underpinning advantage of the technology yeah. and the, the the applications that sit on top of it in the world. okay guys so what are the risks associated with well it should be blockchain because right because we, we've said over and over again that crypto and nft sit on top of the blockchain this is just the underpinning technology and i know that the the, the boj had been has been issuing some warnings about cryptocurrency and it's not stable and it's not secure and it, it it's conflicting because if if the if the if the underlying technology is supposed to be secure then wouldn't that be a conflicting statement to make i'm not sure but what are some of the risks associated with these kinds of technology and what should jamaicans look out for persons who want to either trade cryptocurrency or creatives who want to you know use nft as another way of getting income for their creative output what are the risks and what should we be looking out for yeah to, to just to just clarify something what the bank of jamaica says out there mm. is in relation to cryptocurrencies not blockchain yeah right cryptocurrency and, and so i'm saying if, if it sits on top of blockchain and blockchain is supposed to be secure yeah so the technology is secure but that doesn't mean what sits on top of it is is all it, uh, okay so, so what the bank of jamaica is saying generally is that um be mindful of what you do when you get involved in the cryptocurrency space yeah. Because yeah. when you talk about your money being your responsibility, yeah, that is That's how the pizza in man. that space. There is no JDIC or yeah. deposit insurance and so on. You are responsible for your money. So if, anything, if you lose yeah, yeah, yeah. it, it is gone. You can't yeah. go cost nobody except yourself. Mm -hmm. As it relates to um, blockchain technology, blockchain is extremely secure. It is not unhackable but it is extremely secure and whenever the security is violated all sorts of red flags go um yeah, so yeah. so it's it's important to differentiate between the two um the other thing with cryptocurrencies from a risk standpoint which again the detractors always like to move to is because it's not regulated or or backed by a central bank or, or government you're on your own uh the, the volatility of cryptocurrencies is extremely high so where do you get where does bitcoin get its value from what's the tangible um asset or thing that big that gives bitcoin its its value these are oh, all the things that, that many people yeah but you know what's funny who yeah. gave this yeah. value we did who gave we this did. value right we, it's no different did. right so yeah. so somebody said this had value well yeah. the, the the market said it kind the of value different <laughs> well bitcoin so, uses bitcoin a ton of electricity and, and energy to create so that gives it value at the start um mining is considered like gold mining because the lowest value you could ever give gold is what the miners would actually charge you for digging it up out of the earth wherever it is right so the lowest yeah. value you could ever get for gold is how much you could pay someone to dig it up for you so yeah. bitcoin or crypto in a sense has that same vibe like the lowest value bitcoin will ever go to theoretically is how much it costs for someone to actually create one and today it costs thousands of dollars for a miner to generate one single bitcoin right so unlike the paper dollars that we just give value it's called fiat money faith yeah right it's we give value to it because no, in most countries it's no longer backed by gold or any right. physical assets right yeah um, um cryptocurrencies are those that follow a proof of work mechanism 
I, I don't want to say too complicated, but the security and underlining blockchain, and that's what makes sure that what happens on top is secured. But at the same time, who's creating the other layers of everything on top is what you need to be skeptical of when uh -huh. looking okay. for scams, et cetera, right? So like any business in any industry, um, I always like to say, because every now and then I, hope I host uh, small um, Bitcoin and blockchain tech um, seminars here locally yeah. in West Vermont. Uh, but what I always like to say is, is um, if you, like I said, I said it before, if you can't use it, right, don't invest in it. And 95% yeah. of startup companies fail, right? And that goes for blockchain tech and every industry on earth, right? So it's no different with cryptocurrencies. You have to be very, you have to be very diligent with where you put your hard-earned money when it comes yeah. to any startup, so regardless if it's on a blockchain, if it's a penny stock, if it's on a stock market, it's all pretty much the same. You just have to, in this case, you know, there will the government, the Bank of Jamaica in particular, won't come to your help if uh, everything falls out. Right. Okay, so what about NFTs? That's that's NFTs that's, that's, no. that's I don't know. How, well, NFTs, NFTs are a whole new risks, bar game, and, and, and they've should. really only become there's even more risk in NFTs than there is mm -hmm. in just uh, general in the general crypto space, right? right? Everyone's an artist. I mean, everyone's an artist. Everyone sings in the shower. Everyone doodles here and there. It comes back down to the trust of the network and the blockchain and entities that say this particular NFT is the original. So it's still all back down to um, the tech, the blockchain tech, with the trust and the risk involved is usually human-based, right? Um, right? Anyone could create an NFT, right? Mm -hmm. Anyone could create a website saying this NFT or these future NFTs are gonna create value, right? Anyone could create a way of collecting for these nfts but when it actually is released no one could tell you what value it will have right it's like buying a legendary album before it becomes legendary right so it's it's you know um art uh people always say artists are not art the art doesn't become valuable until the artist passes so it's, these so it's things that you know so, in a way where you're speculative exactly it's extremely value, speculative. It's really depending on the market response to, to to that thing exactly but other there are other use cases for nfts right so for example in the game space if you have a character that's on an nft you can if the if there are other nft enabled games you could transfer your digital identity or this character right. or this avatar the history of this character onto a new okay. game by just transferring the nft there right so okay. there's all these different use cases of it but it always yeah. the risk is always human based right the risk is it's not the technology the risk is not the exactly right there's there's the who? Seen a lot of crypto exactly. pages jamaican crypto pages and nft pages popular um, there, like, so hmm. <laughs> there's there's been well, at least a hundred jamaica based cryptocurrencies and coins and projects and wow. out of really? many that I've personally, yes, there is. But they're so underground and they're so, <clears throat> let me use the word scammy, right? That once you see them, if you know the red flags to look for, you know these projects, you just okay, don't what are the red flags? Right? And the what most, I'm asking about what are the red well, flags? Uh, it, much like the same you would see with startup companies, right? right? That are looking to, for you to invest your funds, right? Um, if you check Kickstarter, or crowdfunding websites, it's the same nature of what, if you, I, all right, so if you can't find use for it, why would you buy it, right? right. And if you can't see why what someone else would find use for it, why would they have, a, why would you invest your own money? And that goes for okay. everything in the space. Yeah. NFTs, um, Crypto DeFi, uh, cryptocurrencies, everything, right? So, okay. it's, so it, it comes question. back down to human risk. Human risk. Last question. I can start with Vernon on this one. Aside from cryptocurrency and NFTs, 
what are some other important uses of blockchain technologies? And I know, Varun, you're using it to, to, to you know, kind of establish farmers so they can get access to credit. But what are some other real world uses of blockchain technology that could actually you know, benefit the everyday person? Right. So, I mean, honestly, there are so many. And to go back to your question around risks, what I want people to take away from this and understand is that blockchain technology is solid, really, really um, trustworthy stuff. Yeah. But it's kind of like the internet, right? The internet is solid. It's a solid protocol, but it doesn't mean everything that on the in, on the internet is automatically trustworthy or automatically yeah. solid. So very much think about things this way. And in terms of opportunities, again, to look at the internet, it's almost as if it's hard for us to imagine. When we were in the 90s, for those of you who existed at that time, you know, um, it was hard to imagine what Facebook would be doing now, right? Yeah. But it's the same internet that has existed then. It's, you know, web pages have, it, have just evolved. So, Become more sophisticated. What, yeah, a lot of what excites me is really about, you know, the fintech applications, so financial technology. We're really seeing the ability to do things that literally were not possible before. So when Trevor talked about NFTs and being able to pay royalties that way, yes, that's that's one step. But then to take it a step further, if I sell a piece of art to somebody, I can create what's called a smart contract so that if that person then sells the art again and again, the same artist can still receive payouts from it. And that's not necessarily possible right now um, to track with certainty in a trustworthy way. So um, these are the ways that um, I'd like people to appreciate it and understand that 10 years from now, there are gonna exist some things that we literally cannot think of right now. And right. that's what's so tremendous about all of this. Yeah, Trevor, what are some other real world uses of blockchain technology? Whether something you want to see happen or that is possible that can be of benefit to the everyday regular person? Yeah, man. So let me let me kind of categorize it in a couple of ways. So so you have blockchain in in obviously what we're talking about digital currency. It's a global payment system, yeah. remittance, um, e-commerce. Blockchain can play a, a major role there. Blockchain can also play a, a major role in, in record keeping. So land titling, oh, yeah. uh, applications, uh, health care, health records, um, intellectual property, which is what you kind of see in M NFTs, yeah. voting systems and identity money. Yes. These really interesting. Are, yeah, man. Blockchain, again, can play a critical component in the trustworthiness, the immu immutability, and so on in these kinds of environments. Yeah. Um, supply chain management, digital rights management for music, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Blockchain plays a huge role here. And finally, um, uh, something that's that's you know emerging hard is is in the securities um, market where you have you know these things called STOs, um, security token offerings, and what those are now, and the, the, the great thing is Jamaica Stock Exchange is doing some major work. They're very far along. They're doing work with a, an entity called Block Station to facilitate trading of digital assets on the stock exchange, where what happens there is you can trade digital assets that are tied to actual, um, tangible things. So you can trade a digital asset that is tied to to the cost of oil or the cost of, of, of solar power or yeah. the cost of uh, you know a, a rare metal or or, or or gem or something like that something that has an actual value that gives the digital asset value and you can trade based on that so so block blockchain will be the underpinning just like Arun said look the internet did some things for information exchange right? that blockchain is going to do for value exchange. I think it's like the next big thing and greatest thing since I split. But but <laughs> this is what you're going to find on the blockchain. We can't conceptualize some of the yeah, things. Right, right now, yeah. You can see but over where time we'll find the value exists because it is the missing piece to doing things in that entirely digital space that we never had before. 
So when we're talking about digital society and all of these wonderful things, <laughs> blockchain will be an underpinning of okay. that. And, and, and it's very important for, for, for us to understand how it does that yeah. because it is going to... I mean, nobody talks about TCPIP. Do you know what that is? No. Yeah, without TCPIP, there would be no internet. So, no, it's so not. Something so, so, so like internet talk, protocol. Right. So when you talk about blockchain, blockchain is going to be like the TCPIP of the internet. Oh. Right? Blockchain. I can, I can see you're a fan, Trevor. I can, I can see you're a whole air conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, the last word goes to you, uh, Donald. What What are some other uses of blockchain technology that they either want to see or that is already on the market or to come? You know, um, and, well, Brown and Trevor has already said that there's some things that we can't even conceptualize right now but these oh, right now. these have, have to be things that make sense to the regular everyday person well well here's one the you mentioned peaked earlier right peaked peaked .com yes. is, 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 is a, blockchain a social front media. well it's a it's an interface for a blockchain that's built particularly for social media and that blockchain is called hive right, right. If anyone can build a peak or a website or a bulletin board or social group or chat space on the Hive blockchain. And what Hive okay. does is secure the data on there. So for example, right now, um, former President Trump is suing everyone from Facebook to Amazon to uh, you know, Twitter for censorship, right? Censorship on the Hive blockchain almost doesn't exist. I say almost because we have what's called community censorship. There is no one central point like a Mark Zuckerberg or a Jack Dorsey or a Facebook data center that may be able to pull your content off, right? Yeah. The creator of the content, the owner of the keys, the same way like in Bitcoin, if you own your keys, you own your Bitcoin. And on Hive, if you own your keys, you own your content. You're the only one that can remove. So imagine a Facebook or a social space where it's totally censorship free, freedom of speech exists, and the only time um there is some form of censorship is when there's truly bad actors and the community itself decides this person needs to be banned throughout the world. You know, everyone has examples for why facebook twitter and traditional social media has problems with censorship everyone has posted a flyer for a party and got that warning oh you need 50 percent less text or there's um you know illegal illegal information being posted, right? So for example, I own a Can Jam Retreat, which is a cannabis retreat on West End. Um, I'm a former member of the West Moine Hemp, Hemp and Ganda Farmers Association, Baroon. I'm not sure if you, you're, you, you, of course, everyone knows IFV and, and, and those individuals, right? So um, we've been creating this space in the grill where we use Hive and Web3 applications to not only disseminate the information based on what's happening, you know, hotel offerings, events, etc., but also to attract new visitors from the crypto space, right? So if you post something on Facebook, a cannabis related event, for example, there's a strong chance the filters are going to pick it up. No one's going to see it, right? If you post it on Hive or Web3 blockchain, right, there is no entity that's going to say this is illegal in this space right. and have it removed automatically. There's no algorithm that's going to automatically remove this. If the community says, okay, it's hate speech, it's bad for us, it will garner enough downvotes where the system itself puts up a warning, you know, um, based on community feedback, you must click here to view this. But it's not removed, okay. right? The content creator's content is still there. It's just oh, somewhat so, behind. Yeah. Okay. So, there's so it's that. just, I'm just saying, yeah, there's just another use case for blockchain tech okay. to secure content and freedom of speech. And that's something right. new that's coming out of the technology. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Awesome. To maybe, sorry, to maybe just give an example that's really tangible for every Jamaican. So we're often asked to sign forms and images or, uh, sorry, photos. By a JP to right to verify that this. Tell us a blockchain. 
Jesus, Lord, so, yeah, I pray. Very much, of course, it can. Blockchain can absolutely re remove the need for JPEG, right? <laughs> you can do that click. You know, I'm glad. I'm glad Varun brought one hundred percent because shameless plug, right? We we yeah. have a digital signature platform that's built on blockchain. That one of the underlying capabilities is that it would negate the need for a JPEG. What's the name of that platform, Chema? Um, it's called Signature. That's the name of the, the, the platform. Is it available nice. publicly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, drop the link because God knows right now at this very moment, bro, when I'm struggling with finding a JPEG. Yeah, so, so here's the thing. <laughs> so you're yeah. such a nerve. But here's the thing. Legislation has yep. to be in step, which, which our legislation is, you know. I'm just saying you have to be mindful of these things, but... Yeah, blockchain-based signature technology um, can negate the need for 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 a, a for JP. JP because a JP is there to validate the transaction. That's right. automatically done. Yeah, by the blockchain. On a blockchain -based I pray the day. Platform. I yeah. pray the day because it's the most useful. You know what? Yeah. Why don't you stop it? Where are you were saying? First, I don't know where to stop it. To no, I mean no. Go to my heart. You get it. Like that's that's the an example, a perfect example of a good yeah. use case here in Jamaica. But yeah, take yeah. it a step further, right? Why do I have to keep always filling out the same information on these forms to begin with? Can't I just say I am who I am and my address, which is short stored in the blockchain, is automatically verified. Yeah. So the Absolutely. identity management, Trevor. Yeah. Such earlier is is a great use case. That's also. why that's why it needs blockchain underneath it too. You know. Kind of give build up trust that, so that, that we can all, we can all yeah. That yeah. Is, you know? All right, guys, thank you so very much. This was a very enlightening conversation. Didn't realize that I was as <laughs> dunce. Uh, uh, um, to just, um, just to the blockchain okay, technology that. thing. Donald, you said there's something about Jamaica's making money and hive. Yes, just one minute. I mean, I, I kind of missed the whole point when I was explaining it. The fact that it's it's lives on a blockchain and it's monitored by and you know the records are kept tracked by the hive cryptocurrency the right. same likes that you would get on facebook right equate to that dollar values right. on Hive. exactly so on when hive originally came out one of the um hooks that we used to use is post your music video on youtube right or any content on youtube wait seven days we post it on Hive and wait seven days to see which one pays you first, right? So, for example, it takes Jamaican artists millions of views to make money from YouTube, which we are the number one generator of music in the world, right? On platforms and social networks like Hive, you can monetize that almost instantly. It's part of the underlying system. The more Hive people have... Ex ex exactly. So... It, the cryptocurrency that keeps track it's it's of the social value of your content that you post has a dollar value and that's paid out every seven days so imagine I, I if you were to take your content a black mirror a black mirror idea yes I forget. the yes. series so on, imagine on yes. netflix on netflix yes so it, it it came out of a previous blockchain named steam which did the same exact thing Content creators could migrate from YouTube, Facebook, Twitter with the same exact content, and the likes that you get on Facebook equate to actual dollars on Hive, right? Because so, there's no so central authority that's posting advertisements. Exactly. There's no central authority that's putting advertisements up on your content. So you, as the content creator, right, gain the revenues that are Directly. created from the traffic directly from ah, your content. Right? So 10 years ago, we were able to create a blog. <laughs> 10 years ago, you were able to create a blog, put a couple AdSense posts, or AdSense yeah. you know, blocks on your blog, and the more traffic you get, you'd get paid from that. Well, everyone's now blogging on Facebook, Twitter, on traditional yeah. social media. So they're generating, they're getting all those revenues and their algorithm is, is content, controlling what everyone sees. There, they own your content. Pretty much, pretty much. So yeah. Hive, uh, the algorithm is cream rises to the top. If the community likes it, everyone sees it, right? Okay. Facebook, it's if if Facebook can make money off of it, 
in one season. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so, 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 so much. Really so, appreciate. As I said, I was today years old when I learned a lot of a lot of these things. <laughs> uh, really appreciate it, and I'm 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 happy that we have, as Anna always said it. We, we have the technical expertise here. We have people who understand what these things are and, and how they work. If only we could get more of y'all in the public space to explain, because I don't think the media or even government, to be honest, is doing a really good job as to explain it. Because for me, the BOJ just issuing a warning saying these things are anti to be careful, doesn't do anything for me. I don't know why you say that. And it's so scary for those to be And it just scares it's, people. It's, so it's, yeah. Trevor saying, this is why this may not be secure. Blah, blah, blah. It makes more sense to me now, because not just look at the bad man. <laughs> and you know, Jamaican people stay so don't just look at BOJ and bad mind pick them, children know what will get rich, can they call it better than me? You understand, you have to understand the personality and the mindset of Jamaicans and then play to that in a way where we are explaining these technology and things that they can understand. It makes because sense. I see some very nefarious, scammy looking activities happening on some of these Twitter crypto pages. And I'm saying people are just not aware. And telling them that it's bad doesn't help. So thank yeah. you guys so much. I appreciate it, Trevor, Verone, Donald, uh, very enlightening, and we please let's do this again. Thanks for inviting. Yeah.